Once there was a boy named Connor. Connor was a great friend. He was a, a good guy and he was one of the easiest people to talk to. He was the most humble person you could ever meet. He had a great sense of humor. I never, ever once saw him lose his temper. Connor, he was like one of my best friends. He was my older brother. We did a, a lot together. Like me and him did more than what I did with my friends at school. With Connor, it's like, he's such a specific type of person. Like it's Connor. Oh, it's Connor. It's, it's hard to put into words how to describe Connor. You, you had to know him. Here at Notre Dame, we have a lot of people that do several sports. They do different sports. And Connor was one of many who played baseball and then came over and ran and, and did other things. I played with him in football, but it's when it was cross country is when we actually made a connection. It was just a normal day at practice. Me and Connor were hanging out after school, and uh, it was time for me to leave. He still had cross country practice, and I quit by then. Him and a couple of his buddies, they usually had late, they stayed late at X period, the study period we have. So I kept looking at my watch, where are those guys? Where are those guys? And uh, they were 20, 30 minutes late, and they're never, they're 10 minutes late, they're, they're never this late, and I was getting concerned. And I got a phone call, and the phone call was from Father Joe, and he wanted to know if I was at home, or if I was at work, and that the principal was gonna call me. And so I thought, oh God, what could have happened? Um, did Connor cheat on a test? Uh, did he leave school? He was with a group of uh, cross-country team members that were trying to catch up to the other group as they were going to train at the Sherman Oaks Park. So before we usually cross the street, like we jaywalk, just to like cut the light because it saves a lot of time. But at this time we were just walking and I don't know why, but he just, booked it across the street and I guess he saw one car stop and so he cleared the first car and she didn't see him and he didn't see her and then tossed him 90 feet and she was going at a pretty rapid rate of speed didn't see Connor it was a sunny day he was hit in the center of the car like as soon as it he like the car hit him like I just knew like that's it because a car came so hard. I just look over and then I see like, you know, just a rag doll basically. And uh, obviously the most surreal experience. Got a, got a text message by another friend, Jason, who was also friends with Connor, just with two words, a simple text, Connor died. And a little bit of comfort was that he died, he died. Um, really quickly. We went back to school. I remember driving down Woodman and seeing ambulance lights and immediately I knew it was real. Up until that point, like, not many things were as quick as that. Like, some things are like a process, but that was just instantaneous. Like, it just changed my life immediately. One time you look off the road, one time you check your phone to see who texts you. That's all, that's all the time it takes. Because a simple action like texting or driving can honestly lead to a huge, tragic event. Connor, Connor's accident is a constant reminder of just how safe, you know, we are not. Just the daily things we do, driving a little bit above the speed limit, things like that, that just... It's that easy, it only takes two seconds. It's, it's a lot of things. It's not looking, it's looking behind you, it's picking up something off the ground, it's looking at GPS, it's putting your makeup on. This is what I have to say, there is no such thing as an accident. Everything can be avoided. There's not... There's not an hour that goes by that I don't think about it. I lost a teammate.
lost a friend. I lost my brother. I lost my buddy. I lost my best friend. I lost my son. I lost my son.